So 2011-12 was the year that you won it and the following season was a transition into a period of your career and life that we could probably put into the bracket of dark days which many players have. Um, what was the what were the turning points for after coming off a very successful season? Mm -hmm. um, we connected the season twelve months after yeah. after that, mm -hmm. so it's almost like this high of winning, mm -hmm. and then invariably somewhere there's going to be a dip. Yeah, um, I think there was, there was two things really. There was me losing my place to Zabaleta, but before that. It was the injury of my knee. I got it repaired, which normally, for an average weight, average height person, should take two, three, four months. But because of my weight and how heavy I was and the way, the way how athletic I was as well, it took about seven or eight months. Oh. So that was, it was dark for me because I'd lost my place to Zabaleta because he'd be he'd been unbelievable, and I, I'd have been injured for eight months. And I knew deep down, unless Zabaleta got injured, I wasn't getting my place back. Right. And that's just me just being honest because he was so he was so firmly in that team that season when I got injured. Like I think he got nominated for Player of the Year. He was unbelievable in the cup. Uh, he was just. Everything he touched turned to gold. Are you his fan at this point? You know what? It, it's weird because you don't. Because I liked Zabaleta, I wanted it, I wanted him to do well, but I didn't want him to do better than me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you never want. To, I'm not one of these people who oh, I, I wish he plays rubbish on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, all right, if he's gonna play well, then I'm gonna raise the bar. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when he got in and stayed in the way he was playing, I knew, I knew, I knew then I wouldn't get him back in. And that was just me being honest to myself. And then I knew while being injured, like what, what can I do to get back in? You know, you go through like stages in your mind, like what, what do I do? Oh. Do I leave? No, I don't want to leave because yeah, it's a club I love. Do I go on loan? But what if I go on loan and it don't, it don't work out? Like, I'm going to be seen as overrated. You know, there's so many things going through your mind. You don't know, you don't know what to do. And who, who were you talking to at this point? So, or were you just working out for yourself? Because I remember, like, you just... When you get to a certain level, like the top, mm -hmm. you just presume you just work things out yourself. And it's hard, like, it's hard to actually turn to someone and just say... I, I, yeah. And it's hard for someone that you turn to for them to be like, does he want to be honest? Yeah, or does he yeah, want me of course. Just, don't worry, man, you're, you're class. You just need, once you yeah, get your knee right, course, yeah. you'll be good, you'll have a bad day. Yeah, and then of course. As footballers, we're proud, aren't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My so, some people can give us information and we just don't take the information on because you, you get put up here, you get put on a pedestal by family, fans, friends, agents, everyone. Even the ones that mean well, like people yeah. genuinely got your best interests at heart. Yeah. They're, sh they're shit scared to just say like, are you okay? okay. Mm. Do you just need a minute? Do you just mm. need a bit of time to yourself? What are you yeah. thinking? You know, Be honest yeah, with you me. know, it was difficult for me because I'm normally that person who picks people up. Exactly. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Like, I'm that guy who asks if, if everyone's all right. Yeah. Or even if I don't necessarily ask them, I'll try do things yeah. to make, you know, to see if they're all right, like invite them for dinner mm. or how you don't want to come. Oh, he's not all right. Yeah. So you know. Or do you want to go, you, want, do you, do you fancy it? You know, you can, you can do little tricks to make sure people are all right. But when people's asking me, I'm all right. Early stages, yeah, I was all right. Mm. But after, nah, I wasn't because... How did you hide it? By just smiling. Uh, is that million it's dollars? smiling, isn't it? It's, it's that, that's all you can do. You know, there's a picture going around social media where... You got this mask on where you're smiling, but behind the mask you're crying inside. Was that you? That was me. But I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to cry though. I, I cry like if I'm upset about something, I'll cry about it because I, I'm just real to myself. But that time I, I didn't know how to deal with it because it's all I've ever done, and I've always been number one at it. How else did it come out? 
I probably treated the people around me not great. Maybe arguing with people when I, I, I shouldn't be arguing with. Maybe when I got back fit, you know, maybe, may, you know, stuff that was out the character for me. You know, picking on, maybe not picking on people, but, you know, like, there's, there's banter. In a change room, there's banter. Yeah, all oh, And then, but then, I'd take it over the banter line. Do you know what I mean? I knew when that was happening. You, you, could, you could just tell. You, you scared me. I, I've seen some people that, necessarily you weren't feeling how yeah. they were. They were getting a bit ahead of their station. Yeah, of course. And if they even came into your banter areas, I was mm. like, oh no, this is not going to end well. Yeah, I just, I just, it was just so much frustration bottled up inside. Yeah. Mm. But that's when you rang me though, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I can feel it, man, I can got, feel got, it on you, you. You rang me and you know, he had an honest conversation with me. He didn't go into details where he said, like, oh, well, you know, you're acting a bit up at training or... Mm. But he said... He wasn't doing anything wrong by, yeah, by but, any stretch of the imagination. But, but you just knew I wasn't right, you know what I mean? See, you were carrying stuff you didn't need to carry. And that's when he... I think that was the time when he gave me his, Jamie's, Jamie's number. It's hard because, like, sports psychology and mm. da-da-da, it's, it's a hard one to pass to someone. But, yeah. And, like, I'm not claiming to know nothing, but I was like... Phew. I obviously felt for you. Yeah, of course. I just... I don't know. Man. But can, can, can I ask you... When you first met me, mm -hmm. and we did this, what do you want to call it? Because a lot of people, you know, they get scared off by the name, don't they? Scares the hell out of people. Because people don't want to talk about it, but... They think swinging watches. Yeah, you know. Man in a white coat. Exactly. And they think they're not, they think because they're seeing someone, then you're not right. It's the model that you're supposed to be broken because, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to fix something. Yeah. You know, and, you know, ultimately when, you know, my first conversation with you is mm -hmm. you train your body every day mm -hmm. you train your technique every day mm -hmm. so why we're we not training your brain what did you see within me you know from the first from the first the time face. because it, 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 I want to know did you did you know straight away was that was I holding back because it's easy like you know I, I knew you so yeah. I could I could talk maybe talk to you or, or say what was up, but mm -hmm. when someone new comes in, sometimes you you you, you you've got to break that barrier before you start. Well, especially for somebody who you know mm. by your own admission is like you know, again let's go right back to where you you're originally from is that mm -hmm. you're always checking somebody out. Am I gonna you know am yeah. I gonna have a conversation with this person? Am I letting them into my world? Do I tr and that's all human beings do anyway. You're looking at somebody and say. Do I trust you? Do you have my best interest at heart? Mm. So he sends somebody around next door and within 90 minutes, you went, bleh. <laughs> all came out. Yeah, all came out. Mm. And so, you know, it's not my first impression because I'm not, mm. I'm not judging you. Mm. I'm, I'm listening to what you're actually saying, but I'm not judging you, the person. Mm. And you talked about you talked about family, Man City, and England, yeah. and you talked about coaches who hadn't given you mm -hmm. a chance, and you talked about not being fair. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to you, Mike, I'm not surprised that you're injured mm -hmm. because it was just manifesting in in in, in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so you were you were like wound up. Mm -hmm. Not wound up because somebody was frustrating you, but you were you were just ready to explode. Yeah. And I remember walking down the drive and thinking, wow. And I think that so I think people have that anyway. I think yeah. uh, what was more important at that point, and I remember coming back to Joe and saying, and I remember Pete saying, Micah needs somebody like you in his life. Mm. Right? And I remember coming back to you and you saying, no, I'm okay. And I told Pete and Pete said, Jamie, please call him back. I know you don't, you know, if they don't want to meet you halfway, it's not going to work. But I remember him saying, please call him back. He needs this. Mm. And I, I, I remember being on the tube going out of London and calling you and you're like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> Hearty's got more money than cents. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. Yeah, I think I think my contracts was coming into it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> astute business <laughs> yeah. That's the business man in you, isn't it? And 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 I, I think at, at that point, you know, for me it was, you know, there was no convincing you. Mm. You know, it's not, this isn't an area that you can make somebody, mm. you know, it's not about making you do it. It's not about convincing you, even though, because I remember saying, I literally remember saying, you know, whether it's me or anyone else, do you remember I said that? Yeah. Whether it's me or anyone else, mm -hmm. you need to talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And again, that wasn't because something was wrong. I just feel, felt you needed to, you needed to get it out. Yeah. Yeah. So you could see everything in a different perspective. And when, you know, and, and then I remember saying, you know, look, it's not me, it's, it's, your boy, you know, he, he cares for you. I'm trying, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. he cares for you. So he's saying, you know, look, you, you explore this. Yeah. And that was the last conversation I had with you, mm -hmm. I remember. And then it was, I guess, two years, no, about 18 months later and you, you got married and we, mm. we, we, we met at the wedding. Reconnected. We reconnected. <laughs> and I remember you had that little whisper, you had a little whisper. He didn't want to show that he, he wanted to <laughs> sit down and speak, but he said, I, I, I think I'm going to be back in the <laughs> summer. And, you know, we could, we could connect yeah, then. Yeah, catch up. And we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We, we did. So Italy... We just had your year in Italy then, didn't you? Italy was a, it was a good experience, but it was, it was a bad one at the same time because I never got to the, the level that I should have, mm -hmm. but I got told I was going to play more. So when, when, I, when I went there, I only played 20 games that series between cup and league, mm -hmm. but halfway through the season, they said, can you sign, do you want to sign here? So they wanted to sign me, so they had, they could sell me at the end of the season right. if, if, the, if, you know, so they, it was in their hands basically. Mm -hmm. So I won't go on a free contract. But the, the city in that was amazing. But again, I thought it was another year wasted football-wise. Mm -hmm. Life-wise, it was brilliant. It probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because I could just see a different culture, mm -hmm. a different way of life, you know, go there with no real pressure or anything and just, just enjoy it. So it's nice for, to be a foreigner. I really, yeah, I really enjoyed being yeah, a foreigner it, over there. It, but you know, it's, it's difficult though because I was trying to go over there to prove to everyone I'm still at the level of Man City. Yeah. And, I, and, I didn't, and I didn't do that. So I failed again in my head. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, fail, I failed miserably again. So it, that again, it was difficult. And then all through the, the season and that, you're thinking where... Where are you going to end up, and mm -hmm. what's next? And you never, you never really know. I always knew I was going to get a good deal somewhere, but you know, from going fighting for. But this is coming for, to the end of your Man City contract. Yeah, this is so. I'm so, so my last year. I've got a year left at City. Yeah. But I go on loan to Fiorentina, so this is my last City. So at the end of the year, I'm going to be a free. But I'm trying to show everyone in that year that I'm good enough to play in a Champions League side. Yeah. So it didn't happen. So come back down now. I'm, I'm getting offered by good Premier League teams, but not at the level that I think I should be at. Exactly, mate. Couldn't, and couldn't it, and, and it's just like way. it's just honestly, it, it's it's the most frustrating thing. And I'm not trying to say I'm bigger than the Aston Villa, the Watford, the the West Ham. I'm not saying I'm bigger than that, but where I'd left off at Man City. And where I'd, I'd come from, I, and not I, got any worse. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I believe the only thing different is my knees a little bit worse. Yeah. But if I would manage correctly, I think I can still play at that that top that top you know top all right let's say top six level. Yeah. Um, at that time, and then I signed for Villa four years. Mm -hmm. First year we get relegated, and I, it's just from a left city everything just went from bad to worse. They had Benteke, uh, Delph, and Ron Vla with Agbong Lahore as well. Mm -hmm. Four top players for the Premier League. Crew. So I'm getting told of the owners, the chairman at the time, oh, we, we're not selling, you know, we, we, we're going to have a good team this year. So I signed for, well, I agree in principle to sign. The week after, Ben Techie leaves, 
I go into training the week after Delph leaves. Vla decides to go somewhere else on a free. So we've lost the spine of the, the, the team and I've, and I've gone there. So deep down in my head, I was like, we was linked with Aaron Lennon, Adebayor, um, some good Premier League, established Premier League players. So I think if we get these in, we, we're going to be all right. He's signing foreign players who, to be fair to him, they've gone on and done well. We had Traore, but he was young at the time. He was at Wolves now. Uh, we had Joran Veritu, who was just signed for Roma. Right. He's been at Fiorentina. Um, who else did we have who's gone on to do good things? Um, Carlos Gill's gone in, in Spain. He, he, was, he was a good player for them. Rudy got a move to the Premier League. So that after Rudy just, just said that, is they all, they all did well afterwards, mm. but we were sort of like thrown in the deep end. All these foreign players came, not really that much experience in the Premier League. And we actually started well. We, we won at Bournemouth. But Bournemouth, if you watch the, the highlights about the batters, it should have been about 6-1. Um, and in my head, I, I, knew, I, I knew we were struggling here. And then we'd, we had nice technical players, but we didn't have that many leaders. And in the Premier League to survive, you need that, that experience. So, Shearwood would get sacked within the first 10 games. We bought, we bought in Remy Gard, who's, who's played at Arsenal for, I think, a season. Not in, you know, you know, he doesn't know anything about managing the Premier League. He's not brought any experience into the team. And at that point, I knew he was going to get relegated. What that early? I, that, I just knew because he had, he had, he had no experience in, in the Premier League. You know, every year the Premier League is getting harder and harder. You've got to either come from a Championship team and stick together and just play a certain way, or you've got to invest a lot, of, a, a lot of money, mm. or invest in players who know the league. And we didn't do any of that. We invested a lot of money, but not in the players who knew the league. So at that point, I knew I knew it was going to be a, a, a terrible time. So I mean, that was difficult for you as well because obviously physically your knee, yeah, and um, Aston Villa being the club that it is and the history that it's got, yeah. Um, you took, you know, you took a, a brunt of <laughs> still took taking. Take. I'm still taking the brunt. <laughs> Go on Twitter and type in my name. <laughs> but but seriously, I th I think you, you you did, and I remember we got together, and yeah. you know you were you were going down with um, Jolien. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, me and Jolien travelled together, and he he's an inspiring character, Jolien, because I got it bad, but he he got it really bad as well because of, I know if you probably won't want to mention this, but you know the scar. So not all of them was getting it for football, people was going personal. Mm, right. So you know in football, you know, if someone wants to comment on your game, they might be talking nonsense, but you have to accept it because it's their opinion. When they start getting personal, that's, the, that's below the belt. Yeah. And in that season, there were so many personal attacks and the way he held his head high and remained his confident self and played throughout that, you know, it was just, it was inspirational. He was unbelievable. And I looked at him in a different light, you know, to go through all that. And, you know, I know he can hear the things and what people are saying, but to remain focused, that's a different level of, of, of mental toughness. You know, one of the best I've ever seen. What did you get out of our time? For me, um, just looking at things in a, in a different light, you know, because I, you know, from when I'd been at City, I was always, like I said, number one. Um, it was learning to deal with things that, you, that are out of my control. I know you use that word a lot. Mm. Um, and just be ready for when the opportunity comes. Because you don't know if someone gets injured. Um, in, and, and just in life, opportunities arise when, when you least expect them. So it's just about being ready for that opportunity. And just me, because I'm, I'm quite, I'm, like I'm always laughing and joking and all that, but 
I, like I said earlier on, I'm an emotional person as well. And just, I've sort of tried to put that behind me and just look at things in a different, in a different light and just in, in a sort of look at it from, from their perspective and why they would be doing it. And it just gives you another angle to look at things mm. without right. thinking, oh, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. Mm. Look at it, what are the reasons are, are they doing that for? And try, not, you can't live in their head, but try think why they would be thinking that or doing that in, in a situation. Where have you applied that? Just in, in, in everyday life. I mean, I've always been smiley anyway, but now retiring for me, because I couldn't do what I love has been the best thing. You know, I, I love football and I, I, I die for football. It's the, it's the person who made me who I am today. But when you can't do it to the best of your ability, what's the point? You know, you, you're taking money for, for no reason. I, I had pro all the problems with my knee. When I left Villa and not played for two and a half years, I was still getting offers from teams that thinking, oh, we can treat it right, we'll manage your knee. But... I could go there and take the money if I wanted to, but it wouldn't be the right thing to do. You know what I mean? And I've just been able to live my life knowing that I'm making better decisions and I'm, I'm looking at the whole picture instead of just looking at things from my point of view. And that's, that's the thing I've learned in, in life. Um, a lot of people say like that the good person don't win no more, but I believe it does. I mean, if, if you have good morals and and you really believe in something that, that is right, I think eventually, like look at me now, I've got an ambassador role at Man City. Yeah, I could have done more in my career, but they knew when I went on that pitch, I give 100%, whether I was playing bad or not. So it's an honor to go work for Man City, that's an unbelievable role. And then the funny side, the banter side, you know, BBC have picked up on that with videos and whatnot, and they've wanted me to come. So for me, it's like, it's a perfect role to go into to, to now because I can do what I love, but from a different perspective yep. in as talking about it instead of playing it. So it's, it's amazing. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you said about seeing it from other people's point of view is one of, one of the massive things that I took from Jamie. Yeah, 100%. In like, because you just... It's not, no matter whether you're like a vain person or whatever you want to say, it, it is all about you, especially in a football career. Oh, 100%. You just get wrapped up and then as soon as something good doesn't happen to you, mm -hmm. someone's out to get me. Someone's, you know, yeah, but I it's think, their fault, it's their fault. Yeah. But, but like, just simply, like I've had it, when you just simply go, well, hang on, why don't you speak to that person, find out where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. They've had every good reason for doing like in their head they've they're not done it to spite you like their life is not set up to spite you mm. you just happen to fall foul of what they thought was right and then there's a way of working it out i just it, it just the, the city situation with you it hurts me though a little bit mm. not because like pep and man city have got their their plans and whatnot but I just feel sometimes all we wanted was a chance yeah. to show that. And I think that's why we get, you know, we, we, I'm not, I, I, want, I don't want to use spoil. I don't want to use that spoil, word spoil, but we know what we can bring having given the opportunity. Yeah. And if someone doesn't give you the opportunity, we feel, we, 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 we just feel enjoyed. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to take no matter what. Yeah, yeah. If... I've been given a chance and I've not done well. You have to accept it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You have to accept it. But sometimes I feel nowadays, why, why players are becoming so like cold and it's because that, that have to be like that in, in sometimes because clubs are so cut, cutthroat when they want to get rid of you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's almost... It's it, they're molding us into be like robots at times. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, you, you play, you play well, wicked. You don't play well, we're gonna get rid of you. Do you know what I mean? So like, if you see all these reports or players getting paid too much or they're not leaving the club, you know, Sanchez at the moment, unbelievable player. 
yeah, something's going on behind the scenes that we don't know about, so we can't comment on that. But we know he's a good player, oh. but he's getting hung out to dry because he's on he's on he's on wa- he's on good wages. Mm. But that's not his fault. Yeah, that you know the, that is not his fault. He can't do anything about that. He's he, Solskjaer come out the other day and said he's remained professional and, and trained hard, but you've got all these people on social media saying you're stealing for our club, you, you, you're overweight, you don't like that. So, like, society is moulding us into being like this and not wanting to open out because we just go into our shell. And that's a, I, I think that's where some of the, I'm going to say, issues and the challenges for, for players not just the young players, yeah, but for, yeah, for yeah. players who are playing now, players who are, are who are retired, yeah. when they have the mental health challenges, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, you know me, I don't like to use that that phrase. Mm-hmm. It's, I think that's where the the person goes inside, mm-hmm. and they've no way of of communicating that, or they don't want to communicate, or they wait till it gets to breaking point before. Mm before that happens. Um, but you're saying the industry is making you into that? I'd say so, yeah, because, you know, if you come out and speak as a player, somewhere they'll take a headline from something and make it into something bigger than it, than it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think players now, uh, the, the, you know, like, the, the, we talk about the, 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 the first gay footballer, do you know what I mean? Like, it's 2019. If you if if you're gay, it was all right before that, but but you should be allowed to come out and expect. But people don't want to. People hide in their shell because of what people are going to think about them. Look at social media now. Is but this is it, uh, this is the microcosm of football though, mm. because elsewhere, yeah, people are coming out as gay and yeah. saying footballers historically. They're supposed to be big men, manly men who will play even when they're injured. Like the way we got brought up when, when we was coming through, cleaning old people's boots and like, whether it's wrong or whether it's right, that's just the way it was, do you know what I mean? And now it's slowly changing. Within the next 10 years, there will be a gay footballer who comes out in, 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 well, in the Premier League. There's been someone in the States who's done it. Um, but In the women's game? Yeah, in the, in the women's game, yeah. But I think that's what someone, like, if, if someone's gay and they're playing football, it's fine. But I, I think someone would just like to just say, yeah, well, I am gay, but I play football. But because of the build-up to yeah, it now, the build up, yeah. it's like it's going to be some sort of show and drama. Yeah. And that's what's making it difficult for yeah, someone yeah, who I'd imagine is comfortable in their own skin. Like, mm. if they've got teammates and, or friends or a boyfriend, Family. they're all comfortable, but they're just like, who needs that in their life? Like, however it's going to blow up. So, yeah. it's... It's tough. So media, you believe, is... Uh... Media is, is, is great because it, it's great for a profile, get up to date for, for whatever you need. You go on Twitter, you can find out what's happening every, anywhere in the world. It's great for that. But... Football it, wouldn't be football without it. It wouldn't be the, like, zillion, billion no, dollar it, industry it, it without it. That's why it, what they make, just, it makes a, it... There's a huge responsibility it, to it. Like. It breaks it also, you know. Well, that's what people love. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you know. And that's what comes back to me, like, some people don't like other people to do well. Do you know? The, do you believe that? Well, yeah, of course I do. I, you know, because, it, you know what it is? Because of the money that's mentioned. Oh. It's, you know, when the players at 18, 19 are driving Range Rovers and Ferraris, whatever, like, they don't, they don't, like, see, they don't like seeing that. Whether it's right on, I, ca- I can't say here it's right or wrong. I know that people say, oh, well, um, this player, he, he's done this and he's done that, he's got too much too early, but I was driving Aston Martin at 19, didn't affect me. If, the, if they're playing within the first team environment, why not? Do you know what I mean? Why, why not? But I think it's, it's the younger players who are at 17, 18 and are, and are nowhere near a first team environment, it can look bad to them. So that's where I would be like, even if you do have it, you don't need to show it. Oh. You don't need to be on social media. Like, you can have whatever you want. I think people get the point mixed up because if you're earning a certain amount, who's to tell you you can't get what you want? But you don't need to, or you shouldn't put it in people's faces because that's when the problems start. 
Any little thing you do wrong will get brought up. What would you say to the 17 year old Micah? I, I wouldn't change much things, but I never would have left City for one. I, I would have been more professional in the early part of the years if I would have known what was to come because my knee, it, it could have lasted longer if it, if it would have been treated better at the early stages. And but a lot of that was down to playing as well because at one, I was playing for the Youth Cup, I was playing reserves and I was playing for the first team all in one week sometimes. So I did play a lot of football earlier. Load wasn't even discussed then. I know, yeah. Now the under, under, an under 10 team would be like, well, I think Mike has played, you know, he's got a, he's got a game next week, so we're going to pull him out of school. Yeah. And like, like, what the fuck? Yeah. But like load wasn't even discussed then, was it? It no. was like, well, Meeks is good, he's young, he's obviously won in first team, but we need to win the FA Youth Cup. Yeah. Uh, we've got a resi game, like, it's pretty yeah, important it that we win play. a resi game. Yeah. It was just... So you'd tell, your, you'd tell yourself, take care of yourself, Dave. I would take care of my, my, my body better. I'm not saying I abuse my body, but I'm, I'm just saying like... It's good I advice. I've been a lot more professional because you only get, what, what, what the youngsters don't realise is you only get one chance. Oh. You know, you get one opportunity. So, like, James Milner's a perfect, people call him boring Milner. I was just about to say, you know what I mean? Look at a guy that everyone would have griped about. Yeah. Everyone would have talked shit about, oh, look how busy Milner is. Yeah. All the way through the years, oh, he only gets in there because he kisses ass, he does yeah. the running after. Look at the 33, 34 year old lifting the Champions League, being one of the most yeah. important people. And look how many games. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And look how everyone's all of a sudden saying, oh, what a great player. What, what, what yeah, after all his years being not good enough. The, the, Do you know what I mean? Previous 17 years, he was that player. Mm -hmm. He's always been and he's been consistent. So just go out and have, have fun. Enjoy your life because you have to enjoy life, but at the right times. You know, I, I you know, the, the term too much too young, that, that, I did have too much too young. I had Range Rover, Austin Martin. I was going out every week. I was playing. I did have too much too young, but on where it was different for me is come match day, I was focused. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? From someone being with you at that time, yeah, you had a lot, but yeah. you weren't a different person. Yeah. You didn't train I didn't, I didn't any different. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I, I didn't... I didn't change the way I was, and, I didn't, wrong, train, and I didn't train any different. I, okay. think, I think if social media was around and people yeah. kept an eye on yeah. Micah then, they would have been like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy has gone to his head. Yeah. Because you don't know him, you need to like... Yeah, I was dry, like the clothing and them like, yeah. I had these hats but white and like, yeah. I was, I had like Vivian Westmond up, mm. diamond watches, like people, if it, and you, you, how many times have you said, said to people, oh, what, people have asked you what I'm like. Yeah. I'm like, he looks like a, a bell. Yeah, he looks like, like literally just a big lovable like guy that I've thrown straight in my family. <laughs> he's me like family, but like outside, you, I know you can't live your life worried about what people think, but you can also be a bit clever. Yeah, yeah you can. You yeah, you can just be clever. That, that that's the, yeah. that's the best way. You've got to be clever. You know, you be can you, have the nice No thing. problem. Be you, but just be fully aware of your responsibilities. You know. I'm, I remember when I was um, at, um, at Villa, and. A team in the Premier League, I won't, I won't name them, but they said they wouldn't sign me because I, I wear my socks low. But they didn't know that I've had compartment syndrome all my career and I've had two operations on my legs, so I, I keep them low and put holes in my socks so my legs have got air to breathe. Perception's more important now than actual truth. 100%, but perception's bad though, you know why? Because why should you have to act a certain way? Why can't you be yourself? Quite a balance, man. You know what I mean? Exactly. You just have to be. You just have to be balanced. What do you say to the parents and the coaches? What What's your message today for if you were gonna if you were gonna say to a parent of a young player, what do you what do you, what's the message? My dad. You know my dad. He's he didn't really say much, but if he said something. You, you knew, like, he was serious. I think the parents nowadays, screaming and shouting on the, on, the, on the sideline, got to have the new boots, got to have this, got to have that. You know, I, I think they should just watch from afar, let them be who want to be, but give them the advice when it's need be, you know what I mean? Just keep them 
on that straight on that. I think sometimes now with the kids, there's too much pressure on them. There's too much pressure to be, you know, I hear parents comparing, oh, he's going to be the new Vieira. He's gonna... Well, that's like, there's, there's no chance of that. He's 10. You know what I mean? He might even not even get a, a professional contract at, what, is it 17 you can sign him now? Mm. So, you, you, I just say just enjoy the moment and the ride. You know, you don't, everything's not got to be so serious. Do you know what I found? Like, I, I've obviously spoke, we spoke myself, I spoke to Richard Wright, I spoke to Karen, I spoke to Casper, I spoke to you. Mm-hmm. Everyone's had a similar sort of like upbringing in yeah. terms of like, the, listen, you can do what you've got to do. do I've yeah. got your back, but yeah. I'll do what you've got to do. Yeah. And like, I think that speaks volumes. Because yeah. it's hard, it's hard, to, you know, again, as a parent, like, you want the best, but there's mm. wanting the best is not having in them in brand new boots. It's, exactly. it's about them being happy and enjoying and, and progressing as they should. I, I've, you know, you know Just better than anyone. He's laughing. Now. <laughs> you know, the, the challenge for me is my, my son's 14 and he plays basketball. And, you know, I'm, because um, I see in other sports, mm. you know, tennis, you know, at Wimbledon, I do a winning parent seminar mm. to parents saying, you know, let them just play. Yeah. Let them, you know, it's not your time. Same in football. And so the challenge for me, not push him away. I'm trying to give him to somebody else because I want to watch him mm. as a dad, mm. not coach him. Yeah. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because like you said, we all want the best for our kids. But... There's got to be. There's got to be a. Kids, little... like, you, like I, I, I'm experiencing it now. I'm an, I'm simple as that. I'm an older pro. I'm looking at young guys, and yeah. I, like, I want, I want to give them a nice impression and a nice calmness to how yeah, they're doing things. How they're doing things, yeah. But the only thing is, is we've got to make sure, as parents or whatnot, we we go with the times. Yeah. Because it's changing all the time, you know. Like stuff that my dad said to me ten years ago might not be, might not work today. Because the, the, the children now are different, aren't they? The, the, they are. That's just the way it is, social media. Like, I don't want to keep going back to social media, but that's just the way they are. That so, was one of the main things, or the reason like, I thought this was a good idea, because I'd speak. I'd have the opportunity for young goalkeepers. Mm. You know what, they'd be, like a coach would go, look, here's your chance, speak yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was a kid, and I, so I got to speak to the goalie or someone who's done what, I'd be like, Phew. Yeah. Best best save, best thing you've ever done. Now it's like, oh man. Like, yeah. How do you deal with a mistake? How do you deal with everyone yeah, coming at you? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Well, yeah. I'm like 12 years old, mate. Just smile and play football. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, 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 they've, they've almost got too much pressure on it's themselves. It's the first thing they worry about. It's or, the or, first or, thing people worry about. But back, going back again, every, all our games won, you know, on, on TV or video nowadays. It's, everything's video, didn't yeah, it? You could you could have a Analyzed, you yeah. could have a stinker for your year nine football team. Yeah, and everyone in your small world would know about it. Yeah, because someone would have you off on Snapchat or so, Some, something. And everyone seeing it. You walk on the bus in the morning and you're like, oh shit! Everyone knows that I had one yesterday. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think that's where you know we want to give the insight into you know how do you deal with that and yeah. you know in in the summer, um, you know what was it like when we had. Um, you know the guys yeah. in, in the summer, and you know the, the young guys who you know Chelsea, Chelsea players, former Man City players, yeah. um, guys from Rangers who they're getting those insights before they get to the first team. Yeah, they get they're learning how to deal with the per, their perceived failures yeah. before they get to. You know where I'm ringing you up and saying you need to speak to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that I think that's you know that's where our passion that is for massively, massively. No, I think it's I think it's amazing now because sometimes you don't know how many people you can reach, especially you. Like, yeah, I played 13 times for England, but you've played what 70, 80 times mm. for England. Like, you're you're one of the best ever Premier League goalkeepers, and just because. You're going for a, a situation now where you're not playing. That's not changed. I agree, mate. And I, I, I don't like people. People are quick to always want to put people down. Do you know what I mean? But the stats are there for everyone to see. Don't it? And I, I've texted you a couple of times, and you know, made sure I, I, you know, I sent you a voice note yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of times and all that. But 
people, people want to see other people fail because it's not them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But anyone who's played football at any level know how hard it is mm-hmm. to sustain it. Look how long you've been playing, yeah. do you know what I mean? And that's why with me, that's why I can go out with a bang, even in my last three years where I was low, the lowest I've ever been, you know, getting people on Twitter, Instagram, saying you're stealing art, you know, stealing wages, and you're on too much money, you, 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 you're fat, you're overweight. So you know, I've always, buzz, you, I've always buzzed off. <laughs> you know what I mean? When people call me I'm like, I'm like pardon? <laughs> um, but the stats are there for everyone to see. We've, we've done that stat that goes around, like 0.4 or that um, Rashford keeps putting out of people coming through academies and stuff. This is how hard it is to make it. We've played umpteen games in the Premier League. We've played for our country. For like, It's unbelievable achievement. And no, no one, no matter what they do or say, is going to put me down. Do you know what I mean? I, I stay my, my head held high, especially where I've come from. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, you know, someone coming into the next step is, you're going to get people, you're going to be, your career goes like that. Mine went like that, then like that. Like some people's normally go steady, then they normally finish up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so the next person coming through, you're going to get these ups and downs, but as long as you remain focused and believe in yourself, you'll get to where you, you need to go. Don't worry about what people say. If you're good enough, the rest will fit into it as long as you, you stay focused. And that's, that's the... That's the what I would pass on to the, to the next... Don't worry about what everyone else is doing mm. because that's when you get caught up. You know what I mean? Uh, which which right-back do you like watching today? And why? Um, there's, there's loads for different reasons. Obviously, wan is good because I remind myself, like, he, he almost lets the uh, winger take him on. Then he comes back and, like... Tackles him. So I used to love doing that. Give him half a second. It's just like, like go on, go on. I dare you to knock it, go on. Um, I think Walker's done really well because he's had a lot of stick over his career as well, you know, for not being able to defend. And But he seems to fit the City sort of formation quite well. He's done really well, you know. A lot of people were saying 50 million, it's a lot of money, he's not worth it. But he's actually done really well. But the standout one is probably Trent Alexander, just because of his assist. Yeah, man. Um, you know the, the ball that he put through, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's just, it's just un- unbelievable. Um, I think obviously he's still young, so he's still got a lot of work to do defensively. What about him though? Like he's gonna, he's got a similar path to you. Like he yeah. come through the system. Yeah. I know you're not from Manchester, but you, you were like, do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's a lot you can relate to there. Yeah, I, I think for him, he'll always be all right because as long as Liverpool keep pushing for, like, I had time to get complacent. Yeah. He's not got no time to be complacent uh, because unless the manager changes and wants a more defensive fullback, that could change. Mm-hmm. But for now, it's a great story because Klopp, seems to get the best out of his young players and his players. And Trent seems to love that attacking way they want to play. So for now, all it is for him is to keep focused, keep doing what you're doing. Try breaking into that England side um, because there's, there's three, like I've mentioned, three that can potentially play. But And Trips, he's gone out to... Yeah, tri- well, yeah, Trips, yeah, Trips has done... Well, I like Trips because he... he his path has been really good, yeah. you know, going from yeah. not making it at City to going to Burnley, yeah. then went from Burnley to obviously Spurs. Not as a number one either. Uh, yeah, as, as, as a number two, mm-hmm. got the number one spot, then he's went to Atletico, so... And lit up the World Cup like last year. He's, then... he's, done, he's, he's, done, he's done unbelievably well and people sort of... Forget about him at times. I think he was a massive loss to, to Spurs. And I know they've got Walker Peters coming through now. And they like to bring through the youth and sell the players at the, the highest possible value. But that is a massive, massive loss for Spurs, me, that. But for his, for his career, from starting at Burn, well, Man City, not getting a sniff, to then playing for one of the well, top 10 teams in the world, he, you know, he, he, he's gone the long way round, but. He's done, you know, I never played at a World Cup. 
Do you know what I mean? But I was always deemed better than him at, at City. Mm. But he's played a World Cup and now he's playing for one of the best. So it's not, you, you know, your path is not always going to be straightforward. Sometimes you need to go the, the long way round or some, some might go straight in like I did. But that, there's going to be diversions somewhere. Yeah, there's going to, like I said, there's going to be ups and downs. But as long as, as long as you stay focused to what you need to do and, and then just enjoy the ride... With a little bit of talent, you, you know, you'll you be all right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd be fun, mate. <laughs> no, it's serious, like, important, really important. Yeah. Um, important for what we're doing, important for you. I think it's important for people to understand how stuff goes on, mm -hmm. how people think, mm -hmm. like, it is, it is an emotional, it's an emotional career and mm. to be a top end athlete it's not easy. No, it's not. And it's not easy to be a shining light either. Like mm. it's not, you carry a lot with you, you carry a lot with you from a very young age. Mm. Um, a lot of questions asked and you answer, to answer them all, to like, yeah. and, and be where you're at now, like successful businessman, we, yeah. head screwed on, like. A lot of people fall off. Mm, mm. Heads wobble off. Like my head could easily what could could have mm. could still mm -hmm. wobble clean off my body because mm. it's not easy being there yeah. and then being there. Yeah, like it's fucking a lot of fun up there, but yeah, so good. Like interesting, inspirational. Look forward to seeing you in the media. Look forward to seeing you. Yeah, look, There's so much more, man, coming from you in football. Yeah. All, right, all right, you can't run around on yeah, the pitch for anymore. Sure, for sure, it, it's it's that. It's that vehicle that allows you to touch more people. Mm. Um, I've got to say, for me, it's seeing you today as, um, as Micah, the dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, I was, as soon as I heard the news and I was like, oh my God, Micah, dad. And, and, and you know, going to be uh, probably the best dad you can be. But I just think I remember those times mm. when you weren't Micah the father mm. and, uh, you know, you've got a smile that you just can't miss. <laughs> a, a, a few weeks ago, I was up in Harrogate and, um, and I, could, I saw this guy and I was like, that smile looks familiar. <laughs> it was only his brother, <laughs> wasn't it? Went to, yeah, Ru went to, yeah. I said, I said do you know Michael Lipsy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so keep lighting up the world. Oh, yeah. And and you know, I think people, people, players, everybody who's around you knows who the real Micah is. It's been a pleasure, lads. Yeah. <laughs>